It's June already. This year is going by super quickly. And I was reflecting back on the run that D wave ticker symbol QBTS has had in the stock market this year and some of the news that they've had, the press releases they made, the partnerships and sales they've announced. I was just reflecting on all of that and I thought I would share it with you. And then we also saw that they just had uh, some, a bit of financial news as well, uh, some somewhere in the ballpark of $80 million that is added to their already strong cash position. So I want to go into all of this. I want to look at D-Wave press releases. I want to look at this, these new warrants that were exercised that added an, an additional $80 million to D-Wave. And I want to look at the chart and potentially make some predictions. So let's jump right in. So first and foremost, D-Wave Quantum secures $80.5 million from warrant exercises. So this occurred on May 29th, 2025 in an 8K filing with the SEC and the exercise warrants were part of the company's post-merger financing strategy. We also know that the general availability of the Advantage 2 Quantum computer was announced within the last 15 or 20 days. So D-Wave Quantum's recent developments also include a demonstration of quantum supremacy, where its system outperformed a top supercomputer and material simulation problem. This milestone underscores the potential of quantum computing in tackling complex research challenges and has drawn interest from the supercomputing community and national laboratories. We know that Dr. Baratz had said in his interview that after the quantum supremacy findings were announced that the company had received multiple inquiries from other supercomputing centers for uh, potential collaborations. So this $80.5 million, now I'm doing some inv investigation into this. And if any of you knew more about this, uh, let me know in the comments. But what I found was on Yahoo Finance, I wanted to look at their cash position. And this was a Yahoo Finance article called D-Wave or Rigetti, which quantum hardware should you choose? Robust cash position with no short-term debt. At the end of March 2025, D-Wave had $304 million in cash and also repaid its secured term loan in the first quarter of 2024. The company's debt to capital ratio dropped 12.9%, down from 32.7% in the fourth quarter of 2024, highlighting a significantly improved capital structure. What I take from that is they had, at the end of March 2025, they had this $304 million. And then on May 29th, they just added another $80 million to strengthen their financial and cash position through these through the exercise of these warrants. So pretty crazy. Uh, that's a good look for D-Wave from purely a financial point of view. Let's take a look. I made this tweet. So if you guys are interested, occasionally I make a decent tweet that adds some value to the conversation. And this was one of them. So basically I went back to the press releases of all of D wave in 2025 and I did a hand count. So I counted how many press releases they released each month this year, because I was, it seemed like maybe since the advantage too, they had been a little bit quiet and I was wondering, are they below average? Are they on average? Are they above average? So the average was about seven a month. And in the month of May, they had actually only released five press releases, the most recent one being the Advantage 2 system. So it seems like in June, we're due for another, if if we're just the law of averages hold up at the current pace, we should have another five to seven press releases coming from D-Wave. New sale, new partnership, new paper. That's what I'm wondering. Are the, are they going to, how are they going to keep this momentum that they've had in 2025. One of the concerns and a valid concern for D-Wave is the valuation at its current price is too high. And one of my personal concerns is 
quarter over quarter, will they be able to replicate the financial results? So they had their 15 million sort of windfall quarter, but can they get another system sale or can they find more revenue streams by the time quarter two comes around? And if they show year over year growth, will that be enough for Wall Street and enough for investors? Or will the stock be sent down if they quarter over quarter don't improve? I'm not expecting at this point in time a quarter over quarter improvement unless we see some sort of news or some sort of catalyst that would indicate that potentially they have more momentum financially on the revenue side. So let's just take a look Kind of looking back, we know that in 2025, D-Wave stock has been halted. They've had a, a 2025 conference that I personally attended. They've had their stock go up and down 50, 60, 70, 80%. And now they've been in the last couple of weeks at all-time highs with almost a 200% gain on the stock from their last earnings. So it's just been a wild 2025 so far. And we still have seven months left. We have all of June and then July through December for D-Wave. So this, this has been a special year so far for D-Wave. And will that continue is the question. So D-Wave Quantum CEO, Dr. Bratz addresses NVIDIA CEO, Jensen Huang. So I just cherry picked a few press releases that D-Wave has done. And this was right when NVIDIA CEO Jensen had made the comments. And then the next day, Dr. Bratz came on and CNBC and said, nope, he's dead wrong. Then we have the Leap Quantum Launchpad program to fast track deployment of quantum computing applications. So we saw in January, February, March, IonQ, D-Wave, some of these companies get a lot more aggressive with their quantum is now quantum on-ramping. Uh, they, they have different marketing names for them, but the overall, the shift that we saw was an increased emphasis on onboarding and quantum now. D-Wave launches Quantum Realized, a brand campaign to illustrate the benefits of today's quantum computing. So, so less than a month after Jensen had made his comments, D-Wave had a quantum realized campaign. So, I mean, you got to give credit where it's where credit is due. Their marketing and PR is incredible for the company. Then we saw on February 13th, investors love this. They sold their ULIC system. So the the system was in ULIC for a while, but they, they finalized the purchase for the first high performance computing center in the world to own D-Wave's Advantage system. Then this was probably the most meaningful scientific news from D-Wave. They were the first to demonstrate quantum supremacy on a useful real world problem. And there's this book that I have. I recommend you all read and it's called Quantum Supremacy. And Michio Kaku wrote this. So, so this book was written in 2023. And a lot has changed in quantum even in the past two years since the book was published. But the book has tons of information. And the idea is that a quantum computer will be able to do calculations that a classical computer could never do in a million or a hundred million years. What D-Wave did this year is they proved on an actual useful real world problem that their computer could solve a problem that a classical computer would take many order, orders of magnitude longer to solve or couldn't solve at all. So very impressive from D-Wave. D-Wave reported their fourth quarter and year-end results and saw a little bit of a bump in their stock. Japan Tobacco and D-Wave announced their quantum proof of concept for classical results for LLM training in drug discovery. And I actually had the opportunity to talk to a few guys over there at Japan Tobacco when I was at the conference and they were super friendly, super nice. Um, and I had even talked about having their chief scientist as a guest on the show. And I reached out to them after the conference and they said at this point in time, no, but in, in the future, hopefully we could get Japan Tobacco on the show to talk about their uh, pharmaceutical research. Then Ford Audison deploys vehicle manufacturing application built with D-Wave technology. So uh, real world practical application in use today. Then we know that D-Wave and Davidson, this installation is now complete 
for an on-site annealing quantum computer at Davidson's headquarters in Alabama. So that's pretty exciting to see where that potentially could go for Davidson and D-Wave. We saw this massive record revenue of $15 million up 500% year over year. And this has been the main catalyst for the stock going higher and higher. So their first quarter 2025 results looked great. Then they talked commercial momentum on Fox Business. Here we are, fast forward today, the general availability of the advantage to quantum computer. So they announced that general availability. So you can see that 2025 has been an eventful year for D-Wave Quantum. And now they've just added, they've stabilized and increased their financial position. And they've also now added an additional $80.5 million to their financial position. And this just happened Thursday of last week. So we, we saw in the quantum, and this kind of brings us back to our last trading session on Friday, where we saw D-Wave actually ended in the green. And it was very likely because of this $80 million infusion. And this was in light of lots of sell-off in the sector. So stocks we cover all the time, like Ion Q and Rigetti and QUBT and LAES really flush on Friday. And it was impressive that D-Wave ended in the green. So that's a good segue into kind of looking at D-Wave's chart. And let's kind of make some predictions on where this may be going from here. So just from you were able to pick up D-Wave shares after the quantum crash, which happened right here for three bucks. And in just a few short months, it's climbed 440% and it closed at 355%. So congratulations to anyone who bought the dip here. D-Wave has had a kind of a, a spike and dip spike and dip pattern. So are we encountering again, perhaps the dip part of the pattern? And when we get in a little closer to the chart, we talked about this on the Friday show, but basically what we're seeing is what could potentially be the start of a head and shoulders. So what is a head and shoulders? A head and shoulders is basically if I draw the shoulder, that's a terrible shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder, and then typically sell off would come after a head and shoulders. But what happened on Friday and with this cash infusion is it seems the bulls kind of won um, at least the day. And then it makes us kind of wonder, okay, so what? where does the stock go from here? Because the valuation is really high. And there's obviously all these positive catalysts, but a lot of us are worried about Q2. So what, what happens now? So let's take a look at a couple indicators. Closed right at its simple moving average. It also, D-Wave is also just right touching its 50-day moving average, which could indicate a spot for a potential bounce. It's well above the 100 and way, way, way above the 200. So if we look at it from a different perspective, we had earnings back here in early May and the stock ran up 190-ish percent and it's cooled off a little bit and we, we see the start of this head and shoulders pattern. But if we even take this line from the bottom of the wick here from when this rally started and we look at this rising support we can see that D-Wave is still moving along its rising support. So it actually closed, similar to Rigetti, right at the bottom of its rising support, which the stock is going to either break its rising support or it's going to bounce off of it. And the question would, so it is a critical point for D-Wave at this moment in time, because the question will be, will we have to adjust this rising support? Will it flatten out? Will we see some sideways movement? So let me give you guys a couple um, predictions. So one thing that we should note is that volume during this rally 
has had increased considerably, which sent the stock higher. Now volume has trailed off. So when volume trails, the stock also tends to sell. So what do we do with that information? So if we just look at, at the chart on its merits and we bring in our RSI, I do also want to point out that with volume moving down, we have seen the MACD RSI correct here. So we're kind of in the middle of we're, we're in a balanced spot. We're not oversold and we're not overbought. And for quite a while during this rally, we were actually in the overbought state, as you can see. So what I could see happening is one of two things. So I think in the bullish case for D wave, we're going to see a retest and bounce off of rising support. There are some definite headwinds. So could it just come up here and could it kind of hang around this 17 area? It absolutely could. Could it break with momentum through 17 and start looking for all time highs again? It absolutely could. It's not that far away from all time highs. Now, if it is to open and there's further sell off in quantum, then I think we'll break the rising support. We come down to this 1496. It could bounce and chop around here where we have just a couple of days of price history. That would be a bearish case and an ultra bearish case. It would come down and then it would move down and fill this gap here from earlier trading. So it would come down to 1242. And I'm not necessarily calling a bear or bull case. I'm not predicting either one. I think that uh, the that D wave is in really good shape for 2025. So short term price movements, if they go to the downside, I would look at that as a buy opportunity. I hope you guys took some value from that. I think D-Wave is in really good shape for 2025. What do you guys think? What do you think about this $80 million cash infusion on top of their already good financials? What do you think of what's coming up for us on Monday? Leave your predictions in the comments. If you're new to the channel and you like content like this, please consider leaving a like or subscribe if you feel I've earned it. Have a great day.